So the Los Angeles Lakers beat the Oklahoma City Thunder. It's now two times in a row that the Lakers have beaten the Thunder. A lot of it has just been the Lakers are too big for the Thunder. Their size has been a real problem for them. Um, but the Lakers played very well. They looked very good out there. And D'Angelo Russell put on an absolute clinic. D'Lo has looked excellent these last two games. But he's also gotten to play the point guard role, right? I've talked about it numerous times, right? Every time D'Lo gets the opportunity to actually play point guard, good things happen and good things translate. And the ball was moving. It was free flowing. You had six guys in double figures. Lakers got over 30 assists. D'Lo was wheeling and dealing, whether it was a direct assist or a hockey assist or whatever, Right, D'Lo was doing an excellent job out there defensively. He was great. I don't know why so many people, so many people are living in the past as far as like D'Lo's defense rather than just accepting the reality that he's actually been very good defensively this year. I'm not saying he's elite. I'm not saying, you know, he's all defensive type guy, but he's been very good defensively, right? And he made arguably the biggest steal of the game um, that basically sealed it for the Lakers. He was just making winning plays. But again, he got to play the point guard. LeBron James has been begging to play off ball since the bubble where he played point guard and we won the NBA championship, right? That's why we got Dennis Schroeder. Then we got Russell Westbrook. And then after Russell Westbrook, we got Dennis Schroeder again. And now we've gotten D'Angelo Russell, right? And I've seen so many people say, oh, well, you know, LeBron is willing to play off ball. LeBron will play up. Well, the usage rate says otherwise. Everywhere he's gone, he's been the highest usage, right? Even in Miami, he wasn't willing to defer. Like, wait, I'm, it, look, just because other guys get moments doesn't mean that LeBron's not dominating the ball. It doesn't mean he's as bad as like a Luka or a Trey Young, who are like two of the highest usage guys we've ever seen, but he still is heavy on ball, right? And people, I've had people bring up, well, look at what happened with Kyrie. Yeah, let's look at what happened with Kyrie. Kyrie was in the 30 to 33 percentile as far as usage rating goes. LeBron comes and he goes from 32 percent the year before to 26 percent in usage rate. Kyrie doesn't get back up to the 30s until his last year with Cleveland when he wanted to leave and he was mad and upset and the Cavs and LeBron were doing everything they could to try to keep him and get him to stay. So he hasn't played off ball for Dwayne Wade. Again, don't believe me? Go look up the numbers. He didn't play off ball for uh, Kyrie Irving. He didn't play off ball for Russell Westbrook. And then to a lesser degree, Dennis Schroeder, or, uh, I mean, even like Rajon Rondo in many ways. Rondo played a lot off ball. Uh, they had struggles in the regular season. Rondo was not great in the regular season, but playoff Rondo showed up, and he was shooting threes and hitting shots and stuff like that. But LeBron was still on ball a lot when Rondo was in the game, and Rondo played off ball. But even then, like D'Lo, up until this point, and then you see this game, and LeBron James plays off ball, and it was everything that I've talked about. I've gotten so many comments from people that are like, well, what do you want LeBron to do off ball? You want him to just stand in the corner? No. LeBron James is one of the biggest mismatches off ball probably ever in history. I mean, you can make an argument Steph Curry because he's just such a threat. But anybody his size is too slow. Anybody that's his speed is too small. Put him in all kinds of actions and sets. And that's what the Lakers did. You know, put him in some pick and roll action. Put him in some, you know, you can put him on the block, get him in some post up sets, right? Get him in, in, as an off ball screener. Get him in some pick and pops because he's shooting better. Get him as as an as an off ball cutter. Get him as a rim runner. There's so many different things that you could do with LeBron James off ball. It's ridiculous because he's too big, too fast, too strong, too smart. And you saw it in the last game. You saw D'Lo just run this two-man game with LeBron James like it was like it was Thanksgiving. It was beautiful. Beautiful. But here's the thing. 
And here's why the video is titled Why It Is. And let's put on our tinfoil hat here for a minute. It's just a theory, just an idea. Don't get too crazy, okay? But here's my thought. Here's my theory. What's the big news right now? That DeJounte Murray is very likely going to land with the Lakers. This week even. I mean, it could be happening right now. It, I mean, depending on when you're watching this video, it, it, maybe it's getting done. But the big news is that the Lakers are going to get back into talks with DeJounte Murray or with the Atlanta Hawks about DeJounte Murray. And whatever other pieces, doesn't matter what the other pieces are. I mean, it does matter, but for argument's sake here, one of the big talks is DeJounte Murray coming to Lakers. What have I talked about? What have I stressed? And my big concern about DeJounte Murray is him playing off ball. DeJounte Murray, when he's allowed to play point guard, is one of the best in the league in that regard. Again, go look up his numbers when he was with the Spurs and he was the point guard. I mean, he was all-star, all-NBA. <laughs> like The guy was ridiculous. The guy was incredible. And when he, even with Atlanta, when he gets to play the point guard role, his advanced metrics are insane. But he's not very good off ball. And my biggest concern is fit. And if he goes to the Lakers and LeBron James dominates the basketball, I don't believe DeJounte Murray is going to fit very well. I think it's going to be similar to an Atlanta situation, right? And why go get a point guard and trade for a point guard if LeBron James is going to be your point guard? You need to make a decision. Either A, LeBron, you're the point guard, and we're going to build a team accordingly. And you go get a Zach Levine and an Alex Caruso or a Royce O'Neal and a Dorian Finney-Smith and guys that can be legit 3 and D guys and play off of LeBron James, and you can run sets to, to operate LeBron as the point guard. Or the second option is you go get a point guard, and LeBron, you play off ball. So my theory is Rob Palinka. And the Lakers, period, never do anything without running it by LeBron James and Anthony Davis. You don't think that Rob Palinka talked to LeBron James and said, hey, we're strongly considering trading for DeJounte Murray. DeJounte Murray, however, needs to play point guard. Are you going to be willing to play off ball and let DeJounte Murray play point guard? Do you want DeJounte Murray? And maybe LeBron said, yes, I do want DeJounte Murray. Yes, I would like DeJounte Murray. And yes, I am willing to play point guard. Which then, if I was Rob Palenka, my response would be, okay, I need you to prove it to me. I need to see that one, you can play off ball, and two, what that looks like. So I have an idea of what it would look like with DeJounte Murray. And I don't... You're telling me, again, tinfoil hat, we're just we're just talking, right? And of course, I want to hear your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also like the video, subscribe to the channel. But you're telling me the big headlines the last few days, since... Since the last time LeBron played, because remember, he didn't play the last game against the Jazz. So basically, within the last like four or five days, the big talks have been DeJounte Murray to the Lakers, right? And all of a sudden, the big news comes out the last two days for this game that the Lakers are really pushing hard for DeJounte Murray, and they're going to re-engage in talks to hopefully get a deal done, right, this week. And out of nowhere, LeBron James just completely changes his game and starts playing off ball when he hasn't played that way pretty much once this year. And now for an entire game, he basically plays off ball and did it extremely effectively. <laughs> I mean, he absolutely killed it. So you're telling me 
that this was just pure coincidence. Now, it could be, again, but it's also very possible that LeBron James knows DeJounte Murray is very likely coming and has had a conversation with Rob Palenka, Palenka and knows he needs to start preparing and getting his game ready for DeJounte Murray. Because if DeJounte Murray comes to the Lakers, he's got to be the point guard. You have to let him play the point guard. Whatever else you get is just icing on the cake. But if the idea is to go get a point guard and invest assets and finances and everything into a point guard to have him come in and then not play point guard it makes no sense. Which is one of the big reasons why I'm team Levine. Go get Zach Levine. Now, if DeJounte Murray gets to play point guard, well then maybe... Maybe a match made in heaven, right? Because DeJounte Murray, when he gets to play point guard, is excellent. And look, that doesn't mean LeBron never gets to play on ball. That doesn't mean LeBron can't play on ball. I'm not saying just ne- don't just keep the ball out of arguably the greatest player of all time's hands. It's not what I'm saying, right? But if you're going to have a point guard, let your point guard play point guard. There's going to be times when DeJounte Murray is out of the game in which LeBron is in, and then LeBron can basically be the point guard. And then there's going to be times where they're both on the court, and you are going to run some actions, and you are going to do things where, you know, again, LeBron's on the block, DeJounte Murray dumps it down to LeBron on the block, and you play out of the post through him. And DeJounte Murray hopefully can continue to shoot 40% from three, and he can play some off ball. It's about finding balance. Right, saw it in the game against the Thunder. There were times where D'Lo did play off ball, and there were times where D'Lo was out of the game and LeBron was on the ball. I'm not saying if Dejounte Murray is in the game a hundred percent of the time, Dejounte Murray has to have the ball in his head. No, I'm not saying that because even when there isn't a point guard period that that happens with, right? Even when Dejounte Murray was the main guy in San Antonio. He still had times where the ball wasn't just only in his hands. But again, if you're going to allow, if you have a point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center for a reason. And yes, the NBA in a lot of ways is very positionless, but you still have guys that need to play roles, right? You still need that ball distributor. You still need that point of attack defender. You still need that big man. You still need that perimeter 3 and D guy. You still need you still need skill position players. So if you're going to go get a skill position player, such as a DeJounte Murray, then let him be the position that which he is skilled at. And have LeBron adjust and play off ball. The guy is unbelievable. And is a incredible mismatch. To, good luck to whoever has to defend him. Getting him in, and having to constantly keep an eye on him because he's constantly moving without the basketball. And at any moment, he's going to break for the basket. And you're going to have a guy like DeJounte Murray who could put it on you know, a dime and boom. It's money. He's going to get dunks. He's going to get backdoor cuts. He's going to get, you know... He's going to get opportunity to just get downhill. And that's not counting like, you know, if you get a guy like DeJounte Murray in transition with him and LeBron, it's just, but you got to do things the right way. So I do. I think it's interesting that all the talk is DeJounte Murray to the Lakers and all of a sudden LeBron James just starts playing off ball for like an entire game, basically. Maybe it's maybe it's the sign. Maybe this is the this is the clue. It, it, again, if anything, it's just worth the conversation. It's just it's, I find it interesting. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm overlooking it or looking too much into it? Um, what do you make of it? Again, do you think that this is a sign Dejounte's coming? 
like I said, it, it very well could just be like, hey, LeBron just wanted to, you know, fit in more rather than dominate. Very well could be. But again, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.